the scariest prospect is the one that we have right now. Where he is no. indefinitely imprisoned, where his health is deteriorating, where he is risking imminent extradition, really, because the, he's just one step away from extradition. This just has to stop. Right now, he's in a very precarious situation where his health is in decline, and that in itself is perhaps the greatest risk. I see Julian once or twice a week, and those visits are incredibly important. Every other prisoner who has a visit that day, about 40 of them is in the same hall, meeting with their families. We're all each sitting at our tables. And I can hug him, and I can hold his hand across the table. He's an incredible person. I can't imagine uh, what he's been going through. Uh, shock. Julian had been in a high security prison for almost five years. I tried to keep him connected to the day to day. Uh, I tried to keep him connected to, to the reality outside because uh, if it becomes too much about the, those prison walls, then it, it's easy to get lost. I describe small things to, to make him imagine what it's like outside the prison. And I describe what I see if I'm walking in a park when he calls. He speaks to the kids every day. They tell him what's happened at school and so on. It's before our eyes a slow motion murder of a person morally and physically. When you keep a person in those conditions, of course, uh, they will deteriorate and I, I'm extremely worried about him and he's already had health episodes. He had a minor stroke in October 2022. He just should not be suffering like this. Until you've been in a place like Belmarsh, you have no idea uh, what it's like. It's very, very, very oppressive. The security uh, checks to go in are are extremely stringent. I mean, everyone has to go through it, including our two children who are five and six years old. They pat you down. They look behind your ears. They look in your hair. You open your mouth. They look under your tongue. And then you go through another airlock. And then another airlock. And then there's a dog search. It jumps up on you, it smells you. You have to stay still, the children have to stay still. And it's quite intimidating, a dog search. And they have to do this just to see their father. Some days are extremely difficult and it's hard to know what to say to get him to feel optimistic uh, about the possibilities of the future. And then other days he, he brightens up. So it really changes from day to day. And there have been periods where he's been really, really deeply in a dark place. The basic bottom line is he's in there because he exposed some war crimes. It is not a crime to publish American war crimes. It's in the public interest. It's dem democracy. We can't make that an example to society where we, we penalize people for, for that. He published the truth about war crimes against a powerful government that is exerting its power to punish him. I tell them that Julian should never have gone to prison in the first place, that he never did anything bad, that he's there because bad people put him there because he made them very angry for exposing the bad things they did. This cruelty is against Julian. It's also against us as a family, against my children, but also against all of you. He's 52 now. I mean, he's been in a prison cell for five years. Going to see him inside Belmarsh, it's really heartbreaking, uh, you know, to see him in, in a sort of physical decline uh, over, over these many, many years of, uh, of detention. Uh, but he's still got a fighting spirit, he's hanging in there. I know it's difficult to concentrate on these matters continuously, year after year after year, as his incarceration continues. But we have to, because it's the only hope for our world. Flags, banners and street corner meetings. 
you can't beat them. Thank you everyone for coming here for Julian. He'll be very moved to know that so many people showed up today. Please keep on showing up. Be there for Julian and for us until Julian is free. Free Julian Assange! Without these things, it would be impossible for both him and me to bear the situations. That's how we're living our marriage and our relationship at the moment, uh, with our focus on Julian coming home when this nightmare is brought to an end.